Hello and welcome to Typebook. We are Chris and Rose, INTJ and INFJ, and we are cataloging a variety of people based on their Jungian psychological type and their MBTI four-letter abbreviation. Today we are taking a look at the author Octavia Butler, and this was a request given to us, and it was a great one. Yes, thank you. So Chris, what does consensus say her type is? 100% across the board, INFJ. 19 votes. Okay. Not very many then. No. But, you know, I guess he's more niche. But obviously, we disagree. And we're going to use this footage to prompt us intuitively to tell you why. Three, two, one, go. Why science fiction? Because there are no closed doors, no walls. I mean, the only rule is if you use science, you should use it accurately. Um... You can look at, examine, play with anything, absolutely anything. Are you surprised that you became a writer? Oh, no. No, I, I think I had one choice. Well, two choices. I could become a writer or I could die really young and that because be there good. wasn't anything else that I wanted. So I mean, if I, I you could not have been a writer, you would have said to the gods, take me now because I, I have well, no I reason to exist. Done something stupid, and that's what would have happened. <laughs> it's what just, was it's it about so writing for you? Oh, you got to make your own worlds. You got to write yourself in. <laughs> Whether you were a part of the greater society or not, you got to write yourself in. So I got to write myself in. And you get to do it in, in, in the limited worlds, you say, because there are no, there are no walls, there are no limits. Mm -hmm. Plus, you treat science, you treat subjects like race. Sexual prejudice. Sure. All of that. Mm -hmm. You could put that in I a read context. About All right, let's stop. I read okay. First thing I notice, she is just like Ursula Le Guin. I feel the like reasons, she even speaks like her. Yeah, well, yeah. They're, I, I, it's like they've had parallel lives because they grew up, I think, in the western part of the United States, maybe even northwestern. But they've, they sound the same. I mean, they have the same cadence of voice. When Ursula Le Guin was asked why science fiction, her answer was almost exactly the same. Yeah, why? it was exactly the same. Yes, because I get to play. I get to put myself in these worlds. There are no limits. There are no walls. There are no rules. The only rule is that science should be science or whatever she said about science. But the fact that she wants to put herself in the stories I'm putting myself into the story. That is so INTP right there. Because they're imagining themselves in this world. What would it be like? And from there, the story comes out. It's extremely intuitive. You know when kids will put trucks on the floor, and cars, like toy little cars, and they'll like arrange them in certain ways and this, this car goes over that one and crashes into it because I don't like that car as much because it's a bit more damaged or whatever. You know, this is like a bit more sensation-based, imaginative play. Yes. Now, what the ITP does is that, mm -hmm. but it's in their head conceptually. Yes. And you see it. And science fiction is their oyster, really, isn't it? Yes, because it's so open. And again, Ursula Le Guin said this. This allowed her to explore. She was um, experimenting with what if it wasn't male or female. Like they take, INTPs can take these crazy thoughts that most of us would be a little bit disturbed to play with, right? Like, I don't know if I really want to think about that as much. INTPs, they invite that kind of stuff in. They love these off the wall thoughts that most of us are going to shy away from, right? Not them. They will embrace it. They invite it because it's exciting. It's that T I and N E combination that just wants to explore anything outside of the ordinary. Yeah. And Effie, I think. Well, yeah, because it's all of it. I, like, I like the idea, and I could see myself thinking of the idea, but, like, it wouldn't go extremely far. 
you know, but I feel like there's some kind of effy, oh, well, let's explore that, or any effy, explore yeah, it, and I, see how yes. it all turns out, like, yes. with my TI. Well, I think in a similar way, that. right, I think in a similar way that this is why I think people confuse INTP and ESFJ all the time, because they do have this childlikeness to them in the NE and the FE, how they explore and play with ideas. They are perpetual children in this way, especially the INTP. Yes, they are two peas in a pond. Yes. And the ESFJ varies in how similar it is on an individual basis to an INTP. Because they can be very much like them, but then most are not. They're a bit more SI valued. Three, two, one, go. Think about people and the different ways of being human. And you can't really do that unless you write about a lot of different kinds of people. Yeah. Has it been difficult for you? It was horrible at first. Um, I have a book called Kindred. It was my right. fourth published right. book. And in Kindred, my character is a new writer. And she has lots of horrible All jobs she, you knew. All jobs I'd done. <laughs> and... Um, I mean, some that I didn't even put in because they were just so bad. What's the best part of where you are now? Um, well, I don't have to worry about how to pay the mortgage. Yeah. Um, I get to write the stories that I want to write and, and, and not worry that maybe they won't be accepted because they already have been. I can recall my best friend telling me back when I was um, working on my first novel that I really should change some things because they were Perhaps going to enjoy it, have the wrong attention drawn right. to them. and Okay, let's start. Thank goodness I paid no attention. I find it so interesting how personal it all is. This might be a, a more of a male-female difference, but, like, it's extremely personal, you can tell. And perhaps this is where they get INFJ from, because there's that, I'm writing the story and it's, about me and includes me and is about me learning about me in the overarching conceptual TI kind of way. And it's very similar to like how ISFJ goes about things in learning who they are and well it's a very thinker way of learning about who you are, right? And, and it's N-E as well. Like, I mean, who, who would think this way? This is how I'm going to learn about me. Put myself in this story with all kinds of uh, off-the-wall ideas. Yes. It's in very order unusual. To it, it's extremely unusual. It's extremely intuitive. It's extremely T.I. It's yes, yes. <laughs> and this is why it's like INFJ and ISFJ, because they... You guys do the same thing, but it's not so grand as this. Like this is like no, oof, right? This is like yeah. a different planet. Yeah. So that this is the, you know, like the capacity of power that this psychological type has to build concepts into exploring who they are. Whereas an ISFJ and an INFJ. They just don't have that grandiosity, like they go out and socialize or something. That's how they find out about who they are by interacting with other people and stuff. This is like, yeah, I'm building this universe and I'm putting me in it and I'm seeing how I would react to myself, to my own imagination. And that's how I'm finding me. And then... By extension, people read her work, and because she's not afraid to explore these themes of racism, interracial marriage, I mean, she has some very interesting things in her books. I mean, she explores rape. I mean, it's it's a lot of stuff. Like, she's not afraid to go there. But then I think over time, then she has been championed as someone who's cast a light on current day society. But I don't know that that was her. No. Her intention going into it. 
But again, this is the brilliance of it. You know, again, I think this is intuition in a way. It's like that following, like uh, I have this call towards this direction. And then that that's where it leads. And it's like in some ways she didn't see that, but then others did. Yeah, it's like she's boiled it down, like, you know, human problems in respect to right. learning about her and the world she exists in, in a detached kind of way. Mm -hmm. And she's just done it sort of as entertainment for herself to find, you know, to find knowledge. But yeah, people it, are looking at it start, thinking, right. wow, you've showed us, you've highlighted X problem, whatever. And I guess that's not really what she was going for. She was just having fun with it. Yes. And not afraid to have fun with it. Whereas most people would. But I think it starts from her curious mind. That's that's the brilliance of the INTP. It's that curious mind. Like, what happens if I play with this? What happens if I play with that? You know, we kind of cut it off there when she was talking about her friend. So this is interesting coming up. Her friend is basically saying, you know, oh, I don't know about this. You better better be careful. And this this is I'm going to say more about this after we watch this segment. Thank you for sticking with us this far into the video. If you like what we're doing here, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and share this video as this way of supporting us helps us grow our project at no cost to you. Also, don't forget to check out our playlists where we have all our recorded videos organized by type. We have an extensive catalog, so have fun using the search bar to look for your favorite public figures. Before we get back to the video, please take a minute to leave us a comment. What do you think about this type? Does this person remind you of someone? Do you have experience with this type? Feel free to leave your type requests in the comments too. The more requests for a particular person we get, the sooner we will get to typing them. Thank you for all your support. It means so very much to us. Okay, three, two, one, go. What's the day like now for you? Do you okay, still get well, up and listen to NPR and all that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I don't get up as early like as NPR. I once did. But all right, I don't. stop. No, not, I used to. Well, yeah, the friend was kind of warning her about this. And she's glad that she didn't listen to the friend. We just typed Barbara Streisand and kind of looking at her life too. She sort of did things her way. And they, you have to be careful, I think, with an INTP in your life, not to squash them too much because they have to be true to themselves. Yeah, in some sense, they can't get too far out there, which I think they would go really far afield but if you kind of give them free reign that's when they shine so she's saying she's grateful now that she didn't listen to that person who was telling her to tone it down because she wouldn't be the celebrated author that everyone knows her as today yeah she wouldn't have a niche yes okay let's keep going okay three two one get well when I was um, working for other people, I would get up at two, yeah. and I would write until I had to go to work. Then I would go to work grouchy because I was already tired. Yeah. And now I certainly don't have to do that. But for, there was a while, there was a, a, an in-between time when I got up around three or four, just because I liked the early morning hours before the light changed. And now I get up probably between 5.30 and 6.00. And I get to write most of the day, unless I have to go out and do something. And um, I do that. Is it a joy for you? Oh, yeah. Just yeah. writing is a joy. Well, I get to read and write. You don't just sit there all day and, and, and punch away. But the reading stimulates my thinking in so many directions that, um, it, yes, it's definitely a joy. What did the MacArthur Genius Grant mean, other, um, other than money? First off, they don't call it that. <laughs> Okay, and if, stop. if it really was that, they probably. She's so expressive as well. You know, like, mm -hmm. there's a spontaneity to a very, I don't know, natural, organic way of expressing herself that can only be FE, really. You know, like, you can feel the authenticity 
in the way she reacts. Like, oh, yes, it's a joy. She's so, like, passionate in the way okay. she expresses her, like, natural feeling. It's so extroverted. I think that there is a false stereotype out there about the INTP not being able to accomplish things in life. And I think that's an awful stereotype because just like everyone else in the world, when they find their passion, it can be all consuming. And she just alluded to it, how she would use reading to re inspire her, basically constantly inspire her. And I think that's what the NE serves in the INTP. So if they have a passion, whether it's writing, a hobby, I don't know, whatever it is, if they have a passion, they're going to use that NE as a search beam to continually go out there and bring stuff back that continues to inspire them in that area of interest. In other words, it never gets stale for them. It's very weird, but it reminds me of this <laughs> in, mu in music. So basically, there's this technique in um, which some wind instrument players use to produce a continuous tone without interruption, and it's called circular breathing. So you inhale through your nose, while at the same time you're pushing air out of your mouth. And so it's a way to just keep going. In some ways, I see that as an analogy for the INTP as a type, because you're not seeing it happen really, because I think they're such, they can be such loners and such hermits and they keep everything inside their head, but there's this constant movement all the time. And I think again, like I said, with the NE, it's like the circular breathing, right? It's coming, the air is coming back inside, T-I, T-I, T-I. Then they send the air back out into the environment, NE, NE, NE. It brings back the nutrients back into the, the body or whatever, into the mind that they need, T-I, T-I, T-I. Sends it back out, NE, NE, NE. It's a constant process with them. And it just reminds me of circular breathing because that's how they are. And you don't see it. That you're not privileged to see it most of the times because they're they are very private individuals in this way. They don't want to let you into their inner world. You know, a lot of times they keep it inside, you know, and then you it see it in me. the final product, right? You see it in the novel, you see it in the musical composition, or whatever they choose to do in their life. Do you know when you know that sort of? pop culture idea of aliens, you know, when they come in like the saucer and then they bring up the the thing, like it might be like a cow, <laughs> you know, and they, it like sucks up in the, yes. the light and then they right. go off and they're the hidden <laughs> and then they like study the cow and then they f find something else and pull that up. That's kind of like it. You, like, you don't see the aliens unless yeah. it's like, you know, it's like a fluke when you're just out yeah. in the field at 3 a.m. and then you see it like take a cow and you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, she just said it herself. That's her, she's reading and then writing, reading and writing. You know, it all happens behind closed doors, you know? And of course, this is the life mostly of this kind of introvert, right? Especially this TI dominant introvert. So much of it happens behind the scenes. I wonder if that pop culture alien flying saucer thing is a product of an INTP <laughs> just trying to I like would. I wouldn't doubt get it. people to relate okay three two one go probably wouldn't have given it to me but what um, do they call it uh MacArthur Fellowship Fellowship yeah oh they, they oh the genius thing they don't say they say fellowship mm -hmm. yeah somebody made that up <laughs> some newspaper <laughs> yeah person. um I um I liked getting it. Of course, I liked getting it. How stupid! Everybody would like getting it. Yeah, of course. It. But um, I especially <laughs> like two things. One, it gave me a chance to buy my first house. Yeah. I was going to do that anyway, but I, I couldn't have afforded one someplace where I would have been comfortable about living. I mean, I had already been burglarized several times in in the the, the rented digs that I was in, so I didn't really want to buy a house and have that happen over and over again. Um, the other thing was, all of a sudden, people who had not 
take a, not, not paid any attention to my work because it was just that science yeah. fiction garbage, right. began yeah. to pay attention to it. And that means a great deal. Mm. Are you trying to create a new black mythology? No. You're not? No. If someone read No, I'm telling, I wrote, I read I'm somebody, telling somebody stories that, that interest me. Well, yeah. I mean, one of the things that happens to your work once okay, it's stop. out there is that people... See, he's doing it, isn't he? He's like, oh, are you trying to do, yes. you know, highlight, highlight yes. X or Y social cause? She's like, no. No, she says that's that's a, a result of what I've done. People want to come in. I think Ursula Le Guin spoke to this as well. People want to come in after the fact and say, were you doing this? Was this your intention? No, I was telling a story from my highly intuitive, creative, out there sort of mind. Yeah, I'm sure it went the same way. Right. They said the same things. The audience. Yes, were they did. Her. Yes. She yes. was like, nah, I was exploring ideas, whatever. Yes. Again, it's the intuition in it, you know, because we have the similar thing with the introverted intuition. I mean, intuition is intuition. You know, it kind of gets you out there seeking. You know, you're looking for something, don't necessarily know what it is, but you know when you find it, right? I just want to highlight as well, like, like the detachment from like emotional conclusions. Right. Like this is what they're doing here is they're looking for truth in a T highway. And they're not concerned about the emotional conclusions. You know, it's not like, oh no, whatever. Um, no, that's social... no fun. That's no fun whatsoever to the INTP. But they think they're doing it. They're like, oh, are you highlighting this? And she's yeah, the just interviewer. Like, no, I'm just, yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. just doing my thing. I'm finding truth, like yes. factual, consistent mm -hmm. TI truth. This yeah, they're is what not TIFE concerned. Will do. Right. They're not concerned with the emotional component of it because that limits you. That limits you. And they don't want the limits. Well, I think they just don't want the subjectivity of it right yeah it's like for intj or some other fi type this is what we do and we make our own subjectivity we look for the subjectivity in things and they're looking in the same yeah. way doing the same thing but they're looking mm -hmm. for the objectivity in it but people are finding subjectivity in it and that's kind of the wonderful thing isn't it Yes, and this is one of the reasons why I'm so glad we can highlight some of these well-developed types. I mean, we've you know looked at so many. This is an amazing example of a well-developed INTP. And you just pointed out how it's very valuable to society, how their contributions are very valuable to society. When they stay true to who they are, even though that wasn't her intention, it still inspires so many people. Because she was unafraid, unashamed, to be herself and to explore all the worlds she wanted to explore. To support our project, please comment, like, and subscribe. We want to encourage a dialogue in the comments, so substantiated disagreement is welcome. Check out the playlist for this type and our recommended video below. If there's someone you want us to type, please leave a comment for us. Or you can look into our fast track system to find out how you can get your favorite people type sooner.